Welcome back again. Physics Form 4, Archimedes' Principle in a Floating Object. Now, this is actually part 3 in our series on Archimedes' Principle. And in this case, something is different. In this case, we are talking about Archimedes' Principle in a Floating Object. First and foremost, your mindset must be ready. You must know that Archimedes' principle is actually very, very easy, whether it is a floating object or an object that completely uh, immersed in the liquid. Now, the other thing is this. At the end of this short lesson, you should be able to understand the meaning of Archimedes' principle in a floating object. And number two, you should be able to calculate problems, solve problems, for Archimedes' principle when there is a floating object. Now, once again, remember, do not memorize. Do not try to memorize physics. If you try to do that, you are asking for trouble. There are just too many things for you to memorize. It is not possible. But once you have understood something, that is the road, that is the door to success. So, once again, you need to do output revision, answer questions, do rehearsal, like what we are doing now. Let us take a look at the question. Then I will proceed to explain to you. Have a good look at this diagram. You have one particular toy shape, all right, or rather three of it, the same kind. It has a weight of five newtons, every one of this toy shape. But these toy shapes, they are put and they float on three different jars, three different kinds of liquid. The first one is tap water. The second one is, it is a float on sea water. And lastly, it is on floating on the oil. So there are three different liquids, but the same kind of object, the same toy ship, 5 newtons. So what is the question? It says, a toy ship of weight 5 newtons, it floats on 3 different liquids. The buoyant forces exerted on the ship in, first, firstly, tap water, secondly, sea water, and thirdly, oil. They are labeled as FTW, TW for tap water, the buoyant force for the sea water, and lastly, the buoyant force in oil, respectively. Now the question is, which of the following statements is true? So there is an upthrust or buoyant force acting on each of the ship. Alright, let's go back to this diagram. Okay. So we are asking the question. There is an upthrust here, alright. There is, okay, I'll go back to the next slide. I'll draw something here. This is tap water. So, the buoyant force in tap water, we call it FTW. And here, there is a buoyant force, I call it F C water SW. Here, another buoyant force acting, it is called FO for oil. Alright, now this is tap water. Okay, add in the word tap water there. So after that, we are asked to say something, comment something about these three forces. Now before we understand this, or before we answer this question, allow me to just conduct a very simple experiment to help you understand it. Now here I have an object that is about 50 grams. Roughly 50 grams. Alright. So it is a float or floating in the water. So it's very clear. 50 grams is a float. So it has a certain weight. All right. Let us not worry too much about the value, uh, the exact value of the weight. All right. So it has a certain weight and now it is a float. Now what I'm going to ask is this. If this is a float on water, 
First question is, is there any force acting upwards on this object? Surely there is, isn't it? Okay, I'm sure you can see it, you can feel it coming from the bottom of the tube. Again, there is a force that is acting upwards, supporting it. So since this is about 50 grams, and 50 grams is actually 0 0.05 newtons, all right, 50 grams, sorry, it is 0 0.050 kilogram, okay, so it is 0 0.5 newtons. The weight is 0 0.5 newtons. 0 0.5 newtons. Okay. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to add in some more weights. Alright, the ball bearing. Okay, even clearer if I were to just let it drop in and you can see. You can see the effect. Now what is happening? Just imagine that this is a boat. Imagine this is a boat, alright, it's sinking deeper, but is it still floating? Is it still floating? Yes. Alright, it's still floating, it's almost sinking, but it's still floating, is it not? So, in this situation now, the second situation, is it heavier, or oh, sorry, is, is the weight bigger than the first weight? Simple question. Of course, this is has a bigger weight. Now, is there an up thrust or buoyant force acting on this object now? Certainly there is. Otherwise, it would have been immersed completely. Alright? Because this is now floating and there is a certain force that is acting upwards. And that force is also called the buoyant force. And this second buoyant force now, if I were to ask you, is it bigger than the first buoyant force? I'm sure you will tell me it is. Right? Now, so, to summarize this whole activity, basically, we need to know only one thing. I'll go back to the screen and explain to you. Let's explain and discuss the situation just now. Again, it's a cartoon version. All right? Okay, now here we are, we have this object that is floating. Okay. It's good to do a little bit of maths as well. Because there's a lot of mathematics in physics, we need to do some simple calculation. Now the mass, the original mass, the first one is about 50 grams. And 50 grams is actually 0 0.050 kilogram. Alright? And just now, we convert, or rather, we know that the weight of this particular object, the weight, okay, we just call it X, alright? So the weight of X, the weight of X is actually equals to 0 0.50 newtons. That was what I said just now. So this is the first case. This is actually episode number one. Okay, we have some ball bearings inside. Okay. So, what is the weight of X now? Now, the weight of X, as you know, it is actually, the weight of X is 0 0.5 newtons. Okay, it's very clear. But it is floating. So, what is the buoyant force acting upwards that supports it? It balances. So I'm sure you can tell me, right? So the upward, the buoyant force acting on it must also be equal to 0 0.50 newtons. Okay? Now this is only true for a floating object. You must be very careful. Alright? So because it is in equilibrium, and therefore we say that the buoyant force The buoyant force acting on this object now is actually also equals to 0 
5 newtons. It balances. So the upward force, which is the buoyant force, what is the value? Is 0 0.5 newtons. It balances. Now, in the second case just now, I added some more weights. Alright? Okay, very quickly. Alright, to save time, just... Now, let's say I added and added until the second mass is actually 65 grams. Alright, 65 grams. So, change it to kilogram 0 0.065 kg. Okay. And what is the weight now? Okay, I call it weight 2 because it is the new weight. Alright, so we have more ball bearings inside. Okay. So, it is now 0 0.65 newtons. So, what happens to the up thrust now? The new weight is 0 0.65 newtons. It is still floating. So, what is the up thrust? I'm sure you can tell me. The new up thrust or the new buoyant force. The new buoyant force, I call it 2, is also equals to 0 0.65 newtons. So, to summarize it, we know that it has a weight of 0 0.65 newtons. And so, the upward force, the buoyant force, is also 0 0.65 newtons. So, that is the, I call it FB2, the new buoyant force. It is also 0 0.65 newtons. Now, once we understand this concept, we can now tackle the question. The earlier question. This is the question. Alright? The question that we had just now. Case number one, case number two, and the third shape, three different liquids. But, can you tell me something about the weight of the shape? Has it changed? No. It is still five newtons, right? Five newtons. It does not matter what it is floating on, whether it is, it is oil or whether it is water or whether it is uh, day susu, it does not matter. As long as it is floating there, it has its weight. How many newtons? Five. So what is the buoyant force acting upwards? I'm sure all of you can tell me, isn't it? Alright, so let's ask. What is the Buoyant force FTW. How many newtons? Anyone? Okay. Some of you are shy, right? But you can tell me the upward force is 5 newtons. Alright? Because it must be equal to the weight of the ship. Alright? So it is 5.0 newtons. Now what is FSW? The buoyant force acting on the second ship in seawater is equal to the weight of the ship. It does not matter how much it sinks in or how much it is immersed. That is not the point. The point is, it is floating. And the buoyant force supports the weight. And what about FO? What is the weight of the ship in the third diagram? 5 newtons. So what is the buoyant force? It is also given by 5 newtons. And once you have understood this concept, you would not be confused, you would not be tricked by the question, and you would know which of the following statements is true. And you would know that, very, very simply, A is the answer. Alright? So with this simple lesson, you would have studied and you would have uh, understood very clearly. Alright? Very clearly, the meaning of Archimedes' principle as applied in a floating object. And once you understand it very well, you can solve calculation problems very simply. Just stick to what Archimedes' principle says, and then apply it in the case of a floating object. So with this, I would like to say thank you very much, and may God bless you.